Hi, I'm Jeannie Nichols with Michigan State University Extension and I'll be talking to you today about pressure canning low acid foods using a pressure canner. One of the things to remember in canning is that what you really need to do is be fully prepared. Easier said than done, that's for sure. But one of the things we also want to teach people is to have self-confidence. One of the things you have to do is just do it. Learn as much as you can, read as much as you can, call an MSU Extension office with uh, questions that you might have that aren't, you aren't finding somewhere else, and then just do it. So today, pressure canning. There are two different kinds of pressure canners. There's a dial gauge pressure canner, and then there's a weighted gauge pressure canner, and we'll be done demonstrating both kinds today. But we are going to first talk about the parts of a pressure canner. And all pressure canners have a rack in the bottom. The rack um, it just fits inside and that's what your jars will sit on. And you don't want ever your jars to sit on the bottom of your pan because then it would be too hard and break. Well, let's say you had a canner that didn't have a rack for some reason and you needed a rack. You can make a rack out of canning rings and twisty ties and just make it so that it fits inside your canner and then your jars will sit on that just fine, no problem. And you have a rubber ring in all the canners. And what you need to do is make sure that that's in good condition. And you can sometimes tell by the way it looks and sometimes you can. If it's all hard and uh, not nice and pliable like this one is, then you will certainly know that you need a new one. But once in a while you'll have a good one and you'll think that it's fine. And what happens is when you go to put it on your canner, you turn it down and you're trying to get the pressure up. The pressure won't come up on your canner and you have water dripping down all along the outside of your canner. Then you know you need a new ring. One of the wor most things that people worry about is the safety in pressure canning. They're afraid it's going to blow up. Well, now they have a pressure uh, or a safety valve on every one. And on this one, you can see it's right here. It's just a little rubber gasket. And if something were to happen, what really actually happens usually is that people aren't paying attention and they leave the kitchen and maybe they forget about it. Water, you know, evaporates from this, even though there's canning jars in it. And that's when you would have an accident and this, this little safety valve would blow out is because you weren't in the kitchen, ran, it ran out of water, and that's a safety valve. The lid would not blow off. And then you have, um, like on this one, is a dial gauge. It's always on there. And you also have a, uh, a weight that you put on it. In a little bit, we'll show you how the steam will come out of here. We wait 10 minutes, and then we put this weight on it. And then you'll eventually see, eventually see that the the uh, pressure is coming up and it's going to show on this gauge. All right, on one like this, which is a um, um, weighted gauge, this is a dial gauge and this is a weighted gauge, you have this kind of a, a petcock and it then has a place that says 5, 10, or 15 pounds pressure. So today we're going to can the green beans and so one of the things you're going to you're going to have is um, are, are jars and you can use pint jars or quart jars. We'll use pint jars today and you always want to use an approved jar. All that means is that it's a ball jar or a, a cur jar. They're made by Altrista now and a jar will um, often last 10 to 15 years. It'll last if it's used every year. It's in good condition and you always want to make sure that the that the rim of it is in good shape. You just run your finger around it and if, it, if you even feel a little bit of something rough or uh, you think there might be a crack, don't use it because it's got to have a good lid here in order for it, or a good top in order for it to, to seal. So we, knows both, we know that both of these are in good, good condition. This one's a ball and so is this one, mason jar. And we have already um, decided that we're going to do green beans. We've clipped the ends off of them. And so sometimes people like to use the green beans as, as they are nice and long. Sometimes people even leave little tails on them and that's fine. The important thing to remember is to always make sure they're very, very rinsed 
uh, that your hands are very clean, that your whole kitchen is very clean before you start. And so we've got the green beans, we've rinsed them, and we've cut them up, and we rinse them again. We want to make sure they're extra clean, and they are all set to be put into the jars. When you can green beans or any kind of vegetable, you really uh, can add salt or you don't have to. If you are on a salt restricted diet, you don't have to can with salt. It just adds flavor. It doesn't help with the color or anything like that. It does make a difference if you're canning pickles. You always have to use the salt, but not with vegetables. And so we've got the green beans and we've got our jars and we've got the lids in the it's in the hot water. It used to be that we would boil lids, but now if you read on the box, it says just to have them barely simmering. So this water is very hot. It's steaming. It's like perfect. You don't boil lids anymore. You just get them hot. I am today going to do what they call a raw pack. There's a raw pack for vegetables and a hot pack. And the hot pack it would be, for example, I would have some green beans in my pan and then I would pour boiling water on those beans and let them boil for five minutes, constantly boiling, and then I would take a ladle, ladle those beans out of the hot water and into the jar, and then I would add my half a teaspoon of salt if I so choose to do so, because that's what it is for pines, is half a teaspoon of salt. I'd put my lids on and process it in a pressure canner. All vegetables and meat products have to be processed in a pressure canner because you do have the possibility of botulism if you do not, that's for sure. So we're all set there and um, when we raw pack, we just make sure we have really hot jars and I've got a couple in here actually that are in some hot water. I've got uh, my jars in very hot water. It's not necessarily boiling water over here on the side and we are going to show you both using a narrow mouth jar and a wide mouth jar. Both are fine um, and if you get them on sale you might choose one over the other. I prefer the wide mouth only because it's easier to pack and with packing raw pack you just you have the hot jars and you're putting the cold food into the raw, uh, into, uh, the raw food and cold food into the hot jars. And the reason that you want your jars hot, right there's a little end, but the rest of ours don't uh, have it, so we're going to take that off. And then you pack it as tight as you can in there. Now, when you've done it the other method where you've gotten the, the green beans boiling, you don't have to pack it because they've already shrunk. What's going to happen here is that I have to pack them in because they're going to shrink as, as they get processed in your pressure canner. So you're going to pack them in, okay, and then make sure they're just about to the, the bottom of the ring here. You can see a couple rings where you're going to put your screw band on. All right, that looks pretty good. They're fairly well packed in there. And you can see how easy that was to pack those in there. Now, when you've done it the other method where you've gotten the, the green beans boiling, you don't have to pack it because they've already shrunk. What's going to happen here is that I have to pack them in because they're going to shrink as, as they get processed in your pressure canner. So you're going to pack them in. Then you've got boiling hot water because your jar is warm. And then you're going to add water slowly, not real fast, to your jar of green beans. Now what you'll find is you, you take it up to about the, again the bottom of the uh, where you can see you're going to put your screw where the screw band comes on and there might be some air bubbles though and so air bubbles prevent the product from uh, sealing. So we have this handy dandy little magnet on one end and a, uh, it's like a it's like a knife, but it's not a knife. We used to use knives, and then they found out what happened was when you put a knife down in here, let's say there's a bubble there. Sometimes you can see the bubbles coming up sometimes. What happens is that knife scratches the inside of the jar. Anytime there's any kind of a little nick or scratch, then that makes that jar weak, and then you process it, and it's going to crack and break. So always use a plastic thing such as this. Always make sure that the top is wiped off. If there's even a grain of salt or anything on there, it will not seal. 
So you take a clean dishcloth and all you're using it for is to wipe the, the rims off. And then you're going to get your little magnet and you can buy these at any kind of a department store, your hardware store. And you're going to get your lid out of your hot, not boiling water. Everything looks good. You're going to put, and you want like what they call one inch headspace. From about, once these were to be packed down in, from the bottom of the, where the ring would be coming on up to the top, it, they're, they're pretty much, there's that much headspace, about half an inch to an inch. All right, and again, the way you're gonna know how much is you look at the, the book that you're using, your ball blue book, you're so easy to preserve. You always have that book open, so you'll know how much headspace whatever product it is you're canning needs. And then you're going to screw your uh, lid on, and you want it just what they call fingertip tight. If you really ream on it and get it too tight, then what often will happen is after it processes and it comes out, it will actually have a little dent in it, and it might seal, but it, it shouldn't um, be that tight. It's, you want it just fingertip tight. And your canner has, you've gotten it um, hot. The water is hot in it. It's not boiling. And because even though this jar is warm, it is not, um, you know, can't put it into boiling water. So, of course, you're going to take this off so it doesn't steam your, your face as you go to put it, uh, your jar in. And there's, like I said, three quarts of water in here. And that's usually two to three inches of water. And you're going to put your jar of green beans in your hot water bath. And what you'll do, let's say that this one is complete and ready to go to, use your imagination. Then I would have the next one to put in, and I would only do like two at a time. And then I would put my lid back on and do two more. Don't do nine pints and then put them in because the first one's already cooled off too much. All right? And so if I had done this raw pack, however, this water could be even a little bit hotter, although it's about perfect now. You can see it's steaming and it's not really simmering because too much of a change is going to make your jars crack. All right? And so let's say I've gotten my nine pints of green beans in here and I am going to now turn my uh, oven or my stove up to high. Uh, no matter if you have a dial gauge or a weighted gauge, you turn your uh, stove up to high and you put your lid on and then you simply turn the lid and you're going to start this one immediately the steam is coming out of the vent pipe and you're gonna right now set this timer for 10 minutes because you want that steam to come out that makes the pressure inside more even now in an old book my old book it doesn't say 10 minutes it might be like three minutes but that's old school and you do need they found out through research that you need to let this vent for 10 minutes all right our 10 minutes has uh, passed and what we're going to do is our book says to use 10 pounds of pressure for green beans and actually, that's the way it is if your altitude is zero to 1,000 feet above sea level. With um, a dial gauge, we're going to need to get this up to 11 pounds. That's what the book says, and so that's exactly what we're going to do. Right now, it's, um, we're ready to actually just put the weight on, because it has vented for 10 minutes, and we've got it on high. And we are going to let this get up to about eight to nine pounds. Then we're going to start turning the heat back so that by the time it gets to 11 pounds, it should sort of, we can turn the heat back a little bit more and it's going to stay at 11 pounds. And we're going to, according to the book, we're going to process those green beans for 20 minutes. And uh, then we'll take the, the lid off and sit them on a cooling rack for 24 hours and let them uh, uh, make sure they're well sealed. And then one thing we don't want to forget folks to tell folks is that when you take um, after it is set and you've you've got the product out of the canner it sat for 24 hours then you're going to take the screw band off and you're going to wash that jar because um, you're going to store it either in your pantry or your basement and we don't want mold and such to grow around that so you actually wash it soap and water wash it 
and then you're going to label this, it um, so that you know um, what date that you canned it. So um, you'll be all set there. All right? And then you, you don't even bother to put the, the screw band back on when you store it, only if you want to give it away or something along those lines. Well, you can see that it's at 10 pounds pressure, and so at about 8 pounds, I started to turn the stove down to medium. And it should get up to 11 pounds pressure, and I'm going to work at keeping it at 11 pounds pressure by turning the stove down a little bit to keep it at the right pressure so that it ends up with a nice product. So once your time is up, for example, 20 minutes for these green beans, I'm going to turn the oven off, or the stove off, and then I'm going to, with an electric stove, all I want to do is very carefully move this to a burner that is not on. All right? And so um, with a gas stove, you don't have to do that uh, because when you shut it off, the heat is gone. But with an electric, of course, the heat is still there. So just be extra careful as you're moving your canner to another uh, unit when you are using an electric stove. And then we're going to wait uh, until the pressure goes down to zero. And then this little silver thing should be down and this little uh, rubber plug will be down. And then you still wait about 10 minutes before you take that lid off. So now with this weighted gauge uh, pressure canner, we've let the steam come out uh, for 10 minutes and then we put the 15 pounds pressure on to can the green beans. And this is like a perfect rock right here. As you can see, it's supposed to, this, this particular canner is supposed to gently rock for 20 minutes. And so I've got to start turning the stove down to keep it at that uh, kind of a perfect rock right there. So you'll go like from high to high medium and you, you don't want to uh, take it down so quickly that it stops rocking because if it stops rocking you have to start all over again as far as bringing the pressure you have to turn it back up to high and letting the jiggle start again and then you're going to um, start processing again with the 20 minutes from when that jiggle starts.